Tap, tap, tap. Yep. Clap, clap, clap. They're all so serious, aren't they? They take their craft very serious. And somebody's very keen to be noticed. They're all in black except one guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he is That's the white queen. Yeah. <laughs> What did you think of the parade? Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, everyone's enjoying yes. themselves. It's excellent. Now, what do you think of the whole thing, the whole chill-out idea of being a gay and lesbian weekend and, and all of that? It does, how, do you, how do you think locals feel about it? Well... We feel good about it. Like, yeah, do you, yeah. you came all the way from Trentham for yes, this? Yes, this yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, we yep. usually come over every time it's on, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And do you, do you head down to the carnival? Yes. Well, yes. Oh, OK. That's a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Good entertainment. Yeah, it's yeah. excellent. Yeah. And so, Abby, how have you enjoyed the day? Now, I just want to know, why is a Dairy Queen and a, a chicken in the Chill Out Parade? We decided that we wanted to bring our love affair out into the open. And yet you're hiding behind a furry mask. No, no, but there are some other chickens out the, there that would be very jealous. The secret is, is, is it a chicken or is it a rooster? Oh, um, but you can normally tell by the size of the... Tell me, what did you think? Yeah, it was good, something different. Um... Have you seen it before? It's the first time I've seen something like this, so yeah, it was uh, a bit of an eye opener. It was good fun. Okay, and so what do you think of like the, the gays taking over the street and and um, parading ourselves to everyone that's out? I probably wouldn't go as far as saying taking over. That's probably a bit a bit too strong. I think. Well, it, we did close off the street. <laughs> that was all in all in good fun. So I haven't got a problem with that. That's good. Yeah. Thanks, Abby. talk about yeah things every positive has a negative mm. when I mean, you've probably squeezed more tumultuous events into your life you know in 30 odd years mm. than most people do in their whole life yeah. you know I mean you did have a stint in, in prison for yeah. all those who read the book will know yeah. um, do you think that was actually a positive in some ways well it, it, it was I mean it, it was a massive life changing experience for mm. me you know to have the responsibility of you know ending someone else's life and causing that person's whole family that pain and um, I had to turn that around. That was probably my darkest few days where I decided I took myself to the top of a mountain. I thought, I can't do this. I, I, I have no answers to this and I, I want my road to end. And mm. was, I, didn't want, I couldn't face my fears and I couldn't face those challenges and it was all too much for a 19-year-old. Yeah. And um, But it was from that day I um, stood up and faced all my challenges and all my fears and um, just progressed through them one at a time and um, found all those positives and all the negatives that was was over overcome me that I yeah. thought that I was going to end it all and um, started to make a change and make a difference now off you go <laughs> pop somewhere else now I tell you what this is going to be an, an, an honor for me and uh, well I hope a little thrill for you as well who knows but I, I finally get to sing with a fantastic choir which we added up all the ages and apparently it dates, dates back pre-Jurassic. <laughs> it's true. True as I'm riding this bicycle and it's true as the fact that we're going to do another musical song now. But I tell you what, this choir is put together by so many people and a little bit of sticky back plastic. But also Mr. Adrian Schultz is conducting this afternoon. Nice big thank you to him. But of course, the whole choir in its entirety has been going for over four dollars. Seven minutes. So, uh, no, thank you. Eighteen years, is it? Absolutely wonderful. We better get on with it. Uh, we'll do a song now from Sunset Boulevard. It is called I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. <laughs> Don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. The car 
God for trees, the pain that sings, the sound here. There's a world to rediscover. And I'm not in any hurry. Last year wasn't a good year in all aspects, mainly because of the episode poor old Heath passing mm. on. Yeah. And you had gotten quite close to him um, through your work on Ned Kelly mm. and um, in the business. Um, had you kept in touch with him um, prior, you know, after that time? Had you kept in touch with him up to the time of his passing? Yeah, well, we met here actually in 2001, here just out of Dalesford. Yeah. When I first met, when we first did Ned Kelly. Um, and ever since Ned Kelly, we'd always kept in contact. Um, you know, we were able to go every time he was in Australia and Sydney. We always caught up and went out, and um, then we did the Brothers Grimm in over in Prague. And then when I was in the States, I was over there and seen him over there. And and then while we wrote, then we was over spend time on Brokeback as well. And then we wrote the book, and we needed his full consent in writing the book. And and after he he um, read the book, he well our first script of it. Um, he just rang me and said, Bushy, I'm extremely proud of you, congratulations, you know, you've done an unreal job and I don't want to change a thing what you've written, you know, I, you know, you're full, my full blessing, full consent and go for it. So knowing that he, he was like that with me um, gave me more courage and, and inspiration to mm. carry forward and do it all, you know. And it was when he read the script of Brokeback in 2003, he said to me, Bushy, I just read this script. It sounds it's about a gay cowboy. It sounds a lot mm. like you. So, it was fr- those little steps in knowing him and the things that he had to tell me gave me confidence in myself to know that you know I'm okay and this is all right and I can tell this story and you know this does exist. You know. So did you get a? Did you um, sort of detect that he was the type to be stressed by the business or you know to take it to take it hard? Or? Well, you know, at the end of the day, Heath was an actor yeah. and he he didn't want the celebrity that went with it no. and he was a phenomenal actor and he played some unbelievable roles and unfortunately you know the the demands put on those people I think are a lot unnecessary from from media and paparazzi yeah. and you know a lot of people just want to know them for just being around them and all the rest of it and um, I think a lot of times that sort of stuff takes its toll mm. you know what I mean and it's it's pretty hard and you know you, your life is the here and everywhere and all that shot all over the world and um, yeah so uh, you know don't envy that in any way well, you're here in Dale, so you've been selling off some copies of your new edition today. Do, do you ever read back through it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you do? Yes. I, have, I have one beside my bed, and every now and then I just flick open to a page and just go back to that, what was happening there, and um, it's a pretty, pretty special thing to have, you know, your... Your life. Your, <laughs> yeah, your life, memoir sitting there beside you, and you flick it open and have a read of it, and... Um, you know, it's um, it's a really great thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Melbourne Gay and Lesbian Chorus. Make some noise, please. Thank you.